Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tosh Customs and today we will be looking at my custom Mezco cyberpunk figure. This is nothing to do with the game. This is just within the genre of, you know, design, characters and stuff like that. This is a fully original character. Um, and this is probably going to be my longest review that I have on this channel. If I'm lucky, it won't be, but there's a lot of stuff to cover. As you can see here, I'm going to move my camera so you can just see his full loadout. Um, he has a ton of hands, a ton of weapons, and we're going to be looking at all of them. Um, I would probably say that this guy is pretty much the equivalent of three characters or three figures in one. He's absolutely insane, and it was a total pleasure to make him. And so with that, we are going to dive into the accessories first, and then we will take a look, a better look at the figure. So I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm going to pop off this head. I'm going to put that head down there with the other ones, and I'm also going to pop off his hands so we can look at the hands um, together too. Once we go over the accessories, we will look at the figure body. I'll talk about what I did on the figure body itself, and then we will see his conversions. And I'm still debating. I'm doing I'm debating as I film this whether I'm going to be doing the changes on screen or if I'll do it off screen. I think some of them will be easier on screen and some won't be, so we'll see. But let's dive into it. Um as we always do, let's look at hands first and there is a slew of hands. I'll pick up the camera again. And you can just see this, you know, plethora of hands. These are from Blade. This whole figure is on the blade base, but I would say at this point it's pretty much unrecognizable. So we'll look at the right hand first and then the left. Um, the right hand is a cyborg, cybernetic arm. So because of that, he actually has two sets of hands. The left and right are different, and so we'll be looking at both. And so for the right hand, um, I sculpted these silver knuckles. If the camera will focus, please. There we go. Um, I sculpted these silver knuckles on all of the right hands, as well as painted in this glossy red um, that runs through all the hands. And um, there's red that runs through the arm as well. And so I saw it sort of like this energy glow. And I figured that should bleed into the hand as well. And um, he also has a blade on his arm. And so the blade shoots off red energy. I feel like the hands should have red energy in it too. So these are these hands. They are dry brushed with black gray. And they. I think they look incredible. I'm very, very happy with how they turned out. Sculpting these knuckles was a pain, but in the end, I think it was totally worth it. So we have, we have that open, expressive hand. I will get to a very special hand later. So we're gonna look at this just grasping hand. Um, Nothing, nothing too crazy about it. Sculpted the knuckles again. We have the red running through it again. Very, very cool. Um, it took a long time to make these hands. It took a long time to paint those cracks, but it was definitely, definitely worth it. And the other two right hands he has are his two different uh, trigger fingers. Both of them have the red running through it. Both of them have the silver knuckles. One is sort of sitting on the outside of the trigger and one is definitely on the trigger so he's sort of like in safety and cautious and then this one he's ready to fight so we have those other two hands with it um unfortunately i wasn't sent a full set of blade hands when i was working on this custom so i don't have the grasped fists for that hand but that's or or a clenched fist for that hand but i think it's okay so the other thing and i really enjoyed making this hand is he has his fire fingers so the reason i did this it seems a little bit anime and stuff and maybe it is i don't mind it um, but the reason I gave him fire fingers and this sort of like this fire blade is because I went, if he can make a blade on his arm, he has energy coursing through his arm. Why can't he sort of exhaust that through his hand? So he's got, he's shooting out this fiery energy blade from his hand. As you can see here, there's a nice orange to yellow fade coming from the fingers. Um, once again, it's sculpted with the knuckles and it has the... Um, red paint running through it and it's dry brushed with that black gray so very good I also got to say I love Mezco's 
attention to detail, like the inside of the hands. They have all the stitching and stuff. It was a pleasure to paint because being able to accentuate details is awesome. And I also textured the fire. As you can see, there's a lot of motion in it. So it doesn't just, this is done in hot glue, by the way, but it doesn't just feel like hot glue. You know, there's a lot more um, energy and movement in it, which is really cool. I want it to feel like it's really kind of, you know, kind of like bursting out of his hand. And I think I got that pretty well. I think it looks really good. And it's fun to sort of have him just like ready to stab someone with, you know, energy from his hand. I thought that was fun. The other side, um, his left hand now, I did in a gloss black. I figured since this is not a robotic hand, he probably might have a little bit more of a luxurious glove. So he's got this nice, clean, glossy leather gloves. This is his clenched fist. And then we have the rest of his set of hands, including sort of like this clawed, grasping, or maybe like throat punching hand type thing. We also have his thumbs up grasping hand. Also, once again, done in that nice gloss. We have his normal clenching hand. Once again, done in that nice gloss, that very, very clean, shiny look. And then we have his open, grasping, sort of like cupped, maybe expressive hand. So those are the hands out of the way. And now we got to get to everything else. So I'm going to just sort of push the hands off my review table. We're going to go to his weapons now. Weapons. Um, this was a very hefty character to make. Um, me and the customer talked about a lot of different designs. We wanted to do a cyberpunk ninja. We also wanted him to be able to, you know, he's running through the underground world, so he needed to have some swag. He needed to be clean. He needed to be stylish, um, but he has to be a fighter. Sort of all these different things come into the mix. And so we're pulling from Japanese themes and also going, you know, what would make him hip, what would make him cool, you know, street cred, all that type of thing. And also he has guns, so he's a little bit military too. So um, in the end, we ended up having this whole loo of accessories, including multiple kind of like suit changes in multiple heads, all allowing him to fall into, you know, maybe the different roles he plays, or maybe he's just three different guys. You know, this could just be, a, you know, just different changes for um, different points in time or different people. But anyways, to the weapons, I have these two Psy. Let me get the camera to focus again. Um, I have two of them, but they're identical, so I only need to show you one. Uh, these were from the Netflix Electra. I sprayed it a chrome silver and then a transparent red, and it got this really, really beautiful, smooth, clear coat. Um, red on it. The handles are painted in a matte black and they look really, really clean. And then I tipped the end with silver. I was thinking about doing it red, but silver for some reason just looked really, really nice. And I didn't want to put red on it. I don't know what it was about the silver, but that little silver bit on the end looks awesome. So those are the size. The next thing we're going to look at is his, we'll look at his katana, actually. So this is his katana. It's like the one that comes on the blade figure, except I've made some modifications. Um, firstly, the sheath. No, oh, there's a bit of dust on there. There we go. The sheath, I've picked it out with some um, gloss along this outer, as you can see, it's shined there. That outer edge is picked out in gloss while some the rest of it's matte, as you can see there. And so that really, um, you know, it makes it pop a little bit more. It feels like the sheath is layered and not just one giant hunk of metal or anything like that. The blade, the hilt, or the grip itself, I did in a metallic red with some black on the scales. And so it's almost like there's energy on the inside of the blade. And that was really cool. And then there's some energy also exuding from the guard itself. And then here's the blade. It is done in a chrome silver. I actually cut off the little supporting edge because I thought it made the blade look sleeker. And I think that still holds up really nicely. I think it's a really, really cool blade. It looks very quick and deadly, which is what I wanted. So we got that there. So that's his katana. We'll just put that back in there, put it away. We'll definitely be seeing more of this later on in the review. Moving to his guns, 
Um, I, an important part, I actually originally painted all the guns the same. They're just sort of black with some black gray and some weathering. Then I went, you know, this is cyberpunk. All the guns have to be from different manufacturers. They, I want them to seem personalized to some degree. And so um, I went all out. Every gun is custom painted, has a different deco on it. So this one is a military high-powered sniper rifle look. We got some gloss black coming through in all the different cracks and divots and stuff in there. And so it gives it some depth to the gun. Obviously, there's like a military green harder shell over the gun and it runs to the other side too. So it's almost like this gun is also sort of like has this extra armor or case. Then we have this crazy looking scope. I have some gloss black on the little sight area. And then I also have a jade green little laser dot type thing on the other end. And obviously it's been weathered a lot. It was really fun to paint this and to bring out the gunmetal and silver um, on a gun like this. And so that's our first weapon right there. The next one we have is an assault rifle. Uh, this actually came from the Call of Duty Captain Pierce figure, I believe. It's repainted. Um, I wanted to make this one feel really unique and bright. And so that's what I did. I sh painted the shell white. Um, we have a lot of nice colorful details. We got a little bit of a wrap on the magazine. The reason I didn't do the wrap on the grip was because I knew it was going to rub off with um, you know, the hands getting put on it and stuff. And so it just didn't seem like something I wanted to risk, you know, damaging the paint on this side or, you know, getting paint chips and stuff on the hands on the other. So we have this weathered white. I sprayed it a clean white and then I dirtied it up with some black gray and just to give it some wear and tear, which is really nice. Looking at the top there, all the rails and stuff have been done in gunmetal and have been weathered down. I love this little yellow wire that runs around this whole base. I don't know what function it serves, but I think it just looks like a fun little individual thing. Have this red highlights, the arrow is red. Um, where the emptied shells come out is done in a gloss black. Just really, it's just a really, really fun gun. On this side where we have the little laser, we have the little laser there and we have an orange wire that powers it. Once again, just sort of going for those bright, fun colors. And then we have a jade green sight on the front of the gun. So you can see there. Yeah, there we go. Now the lighting's picking it up at that angle. Get to focus. There we go. You can see it there. So that was the a assault rifle, the AR. Um, it's really, really fun. I think it's just a cool gun overall. I really enjoyed painting this one. Took a lot of time to get all the little details in, but it was so, so worth it. The next gun we're going to be looking at is his gold-plated revolver. Um, this is this revolver, I believe, is from a spawn figure or statue from McFarlane. I'm not totally sure, so correct me if I'm wrong, but that's where I believe it's from. Um, this is done with gunmetal and black and silver. We have some gloss inside the cracks just to make it stand out a little bit more. A lot of stuff has been dry brushed with gunmetal and silver to give it some wear and tear, like you can see along this rail. And then I plated it gold because I was like, what is more luxurious and, and also sort of intimidating than a gold plated giant revolver? So that's what I did. And I think it looks really, really pretty. Um, it almost reminds me a little bit of Destiny, honestly. Um, but I like it either way. I didn't think of Destiny up until I actually finished it. I saw it. I was like, this seems like a, some kind of legendary gun I'd get. Um, but the one real, the one really fun thing I did was I lined up the little sight picture. So we have our two green dots on that side and our one green dot on the front of the barrel. And so if you don't know how guns work, you use the two dots on the outside and you line it up with that dot down there. And if they all line up correctly, that that's helps you know you're on target, helps you know you're gonna shoot straight. So that little bit of extra detail there was really, really fun to make. So that is the gold plated revolver give it one extra spin around for you guys. So there we go. His last and final gun is his magnetic pistol. Uh, we got the pistol here. I believe this is from a Titanfall figure. The magazine is done in black. The main body of the gun is done in a gunmetal. And then the slide is also done in black. And it's just some nice 
contrast between the tones of the gun, which is really cool. I almost wanted to make it feel like this thing had been put together or belonged to a lot of different parts, which is why I wanted some color changes throughout it. Then it's got this sort of silver sort of compensator on it, which I think is really cool. We have a magnet on this side. And you'll see what the magnet's for later. And in general, this figure has a lot of magnets in it. If you've been following my story, uh, you know that I've been sort of going crazy with the magnets on this guy and it's totally totally worth it you'll see why i also figured since he doesn't really have like any sort of like sight line iron sight anything i figured that meant that that little bit was probably some holographic um sight that would come up that it would just project upwards so i just had a little green screen there to do it so yeah very fun pistol i just wanted to kind of put the silver like there's some ammo in there too so that's our magnetic pistol. Moving on, we're gonna now look at his different heads that comes with the figure. We're going to start with this one here. This was sort of my cyberpunk kingpin head. He has this crazy red hair, which is really, really fun. I actually originally had it as flaming hair. Um, and so it was red and then it um, faded into yellow and faded into white at the top. Um, customer said it was too crazy, and I think in hindsight I agree with him. I think just the straight red feels good. I think the flaming hair would have been a little bit too wild and would have kind of detracted from the look. Um, I don't know what base head sculpt this is. It was a cast that was sent to me, so I don't really know. But I sculpted new lenses on the eyes. Um, I was kind of I pulled from some Deus Ex. Um, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with the video game, but pulled some from Deus Ex for that eye design. I thought those, um, you know, lensless sun or frameless sunglasses were really cool, so I wanted to take advantage of that there. Also sculpted this jaw piece, which took a long time, but is I'm pretty sure like fully symmetrical, or if not so, if not very very close, very very close on there. And so that was really fun to make and sculpt. I also sculpted this lip ring. Um, without it, he, I didn't, it just didn't feel as punk, you know, I wanted him to feel or to look a little bit edgy. And then we also have sort of like this cybernetic wiring stuff going on, on his face on the right side too, which just adds some cool, cool, sleek vibes. So that's this first head. Also, I like the earrings. Just everything about this head is really bright and flashy, which is cool. A lot of swagger to him. The next head we're going to be looking at is the sol is the soldier um, weathered head. Um, when we were talking design, we knew we wanted a ninja. We knew we wanted some sort of kingpin. And then we I was painting the guns, and I had an old vest for him, for this character, an old design. And then I then the customer said he wanted some more pouches and ammo storage, and it sort of evolved into this extra third character who's this old soldier. And so because he's an old soldier, I wanted him to have a bigger eye rig compared to the other two heads, something that felt futuristic, but was still a little bit old gen. And so it resembles a VR headset a little bit. I just sort of thought of it like some augmented reality goggles to maybe, you know, save the gore in battle to help soldiers avoid PTSD and stuff like that. So this is based off the um, Walgreens Punisher head sculpt. So all of this, if you're familiar with this, all of this is an original sculpt. The beard, the visor, the helmet, this back piece, all of it is all original. So just taking a look at it, there's a lot of nice weathering detail in it. Picked out some silver. I got this weathered, dirty, uh, military green. Um, this was fun. I painted, I don't know if the camera will pick it up or not. Maybe? You can kind of see it. But there's, there's 13 hash marks on there and I just thought it would be, there we go, that's clear. I thought it would be funny for a character who's a soldier to have the unlucky number 13 painted on his helmet. So he's got that and a fun little thing and I sort of took it from the people who paint miniatures is how I did these eyes or these lenses. They were yellow and then I put some orange in the center and that really gives it that glowing look. And I'm really, really happy with that. It adds an extra dimension of depth to those eyes, which is fun. And then obviously I sculpted the beard and I, uh, it's done in a black gray. It's painted in a black gray and then I dry brushed white over it. And that just really brings out the, just the detail and sort of that 
peppered, old, weathered look to them. And obviously the skin tone's all painted. And I think a fun part about this is the skin tone on all three of these heads is different. So, you know, maybe there's some options or maybe he's three different people. Who knows? But I thought this was a really cool head. This was a really fun head. I've never done anything like this before. It's definitely really, really fun to sculpt and design. Coming to our final head. This is our ninja assassin head. This was based off of the... Captain America Unmasked Head, not the movie version. It was like an old Marvel Legends, possibly Toy Biz version. And so this head went under a lot of redesign. I sanded down all the hair. The hair is all new. The chin actually got shaved down. This, that version had a much boxier chin. It was just like a straight rectangle. I didn't like it at all. It looked gross. So I shaved the chin down and actually sculpted a new chin with this new beard on it. Obviously, the cybernetic eye lining, um, it runs around the head, but all of that is obviously new, and I think I did a good job making it symmetrical also. Uh, fun little paint details, his eyes are orange. I didn't want to give him a normal eye color. I figure if he has all this cybernetic wiring, he would have some unnatural looking eyes, so we went for this bright orange in there. Um, he also has a samurai sort of top knot bun. Um, that was really fun to sculpt and really, really cool to have it sort of m merging that historical uh, Japanese look with some futuristic designs. So we have that. And the fun part is this is a magnetic head. Uh, when we were designing the figure, uh, we, were, we kept on going back and forth about how do we, you know, take the future and also um, merge the past with it and pull inspiration from the past. And so he was like, we need to uh makes a mask for him some kind of japanese oni mask and so this is the japanese oni mask here in its full glory i know i've posted um work in progress photos but this is what it looks like painted up uh, paint wise it's very simple but i think it um captures the essence of the historical side of it and also brings around some really really intimidating looks with the gas masks and sort of like this black visor thing running over his eyes um, this was based off a cast of the Japanese mask that comes with the Mezco Wolverine figure, and I actually cut it down, as you can see here. This is actually two halves that have been put together. So I cut out that midsection of the mask to shrink it down because the mask before was like this big. It was significantly bigger. So cut it in half, shrunk it down, and that's how I was able to make this mask, and then obviously did a lot of sculpting and adding to it. But there's a magnet inside um, this guy's forehead and so then it will just stick on and as you can see you can shake it and stuff doesn't come off so that's how he has his oni mask that sits over it and so that's really cool and it i was able to get it to fit really really cleanly and there's no paint rub or anything when you pull it off the head the head doesn't get damaged in any way so it's just really really nice mask so that brings us to the end of our like accessories accessories i'm going to take a look at the body of the figure and break it down and then we'll put him into his um, different suits and stuff like that so this is the blade this was done on the mezco original blade body with heavy heavy modification um, i did replace the neck because at the time i know it has nothing to do with like you know blades black or anything i know i replaced the neck and they're actually, I believe it's the actual same neck as Arsenal, which is the neck peg I used here. And I just replaced it because I didn't know the direction that the figure was going at the time. So I just switched the neck out because I thought he was going to be Asian. And then, you know, he sort of evolved into this multicultural, you know, multifaceted backgrounded character. But um, this, uh, I put this long sleeve suit shirt on and this is also from the 112 box. Um, I say also, um, if you've seen my Blade mod figure review, I don't know what's coming out in what order, but this is the shirt that they used on the Snake Eyes from the 112 box. I sculpted armor over it and attached armor onto the suit so that he has some under armor going on there. I also implanted magnets in the shoulders, and you'll see why we have those on there later. Coming down, oh, I mean, I made a robot arm, but the robot arm will get its own really, really deep look later. It's a deep take look. So uh, in the meantime, 
I have this belt here. This was based off the Marvel Legends Captain America belt. I sculpted the Japanese kanji for death on there, which is a very intimidating thing to be wearing on your belt. And I think it seems fitting for this character. And once again, sort of modernizing, um, you know, some traditional um, Japanese type stuff. Sorry, I say type stuff. I'm not trying to ignore their culture or anything. I'm just short for words right now. Coming to the grenades, these are from the uh, Titanfall figure, not the A Titanfall figure. And those are just glued onto the belts just so he has some extra munitions. Um, and I like them because they're small. Some grenades have a tendency to feel big and bulky. These are nice and small and I feel like they fit uh, this character very well. Nothing too heavy, but definitely very useful. Uh, we have a... We have some extra pistol mag holders over here. Um, if you haven't noticed by now, there's definitely some sort of a red theme running throughout the figure. You can see it has some red under his knee pads too. So just put some red lining on the pouches. I think it's pretty cool looking. Coming down to the knee pads, these are from a halo figure. I sanded, pulled these off and sanded them down to fit the knees and put some red, some gloss red lighting type stuff in the knee pads. Uh, coming down to the legs, this is off a of blade figure, so you'll recognize these boots probably. Got some glowing red picking up on there. The toes are actually re-sculpted to mimic a ninja's, um, sort of the ninja toe wraps. And it also thins out the toes too. I have my modded blade figure over here, and you can see, um, let me even those feet out. You can see how much bigger the toe is on um, the blade mod versus on this one. This one has a much thinner toe, um, which is really, really nice. And I feel like it makes him look like he runs faster. It looks a little bit less like combat boots and a little bit more like an athletic shoe. And that's really what I was going for. I was like, this guy's running a lot and he's in combat. He doesn't need something heavy that's gonna weigh him down, but he needs to move quickly. Um, the buckles are done in a gloss black and we also have some chrome getting picked out there as well and then some more gunmetal silver or silver chrome on there. And um, it might be hard to tell, but the boot is in black. The upper cuff here is done in a black gray. And then the toes are done in a black gray too. And so that black gray, if it stays focused, runs around the whole edge of the foot. If the lighting will serve me and the camera focus will serve me. We'll be able to see that. Yeah, there we go. Now we can see it. You can see the tonal difference between the boot and the edge of the foot there. Um, also, for the heck of it, I made the, the shoelaces gloss black, which seems really cool. And he also has that little silver bit that's holding the laces down. So his laces are done in a gloss black, which it's all about the little tiny details, isn't it? Um, so that's an overview of the figure. We're going to come to the arm now. The arm took a long time. If you've been following my work in progress picks, you will know that this arm is completely newly sculpted work here. Everything on this arm has been redone to fit the character. And obviously the sleeve has been cut off on the right arm to fit it. So all this stuff is sculpted. Um, it was originally a bright silver, and then I felt it was too bright, just a little bit too eye-catching, so I washed it down with some gun metal, and I think that looks really nice now. You can tell it's clean, you can tell it's metal, but it's not so shiny that it looks new. This guy's been dinged up, he's been in fights, so there we go. There is magnetic capability in this arm, but I will show that off in a little bit. So, now that we have looked at the accessories, we've looked at the heads. We're going to look at his costume changes now. And so the first one is my assassin costume. So we have magnets in the shoulders. And so we're going to take these lighter, um, these lighter shoulder armors here. Let's get it to focus. Got some lighter shoulder armor. This one has a couple extra sniper rounds in it. Um, yeah, got some red bits. Just really nice, picked out some silver detailing too. Um, these just magnet on and connect to the magnets in the shoulders. As you can, let's go there, let it focus again. There we go, as you can see, it's magnet. It's a magnet, they don't fall or anything. So they connect onto the shoulders there. And then the next thing we have 
is his cross strap. Um, actually, I'll give you guys a look at the cross strap first before we put it on. We have the cross strap here. Um, got some red highlights. This is painted in a black gray. Got some gloss black. This was a custom made sheath to fit this little throwing knife. I didn't include the throwing knife in the accessories overview because I didn't really think it needed it. But yeah, custom made sheath in there too. So to install it, all we do is just let it cross over the arm. Oops, there goes the shoulder pad. We'll grab it in a sec. Cross over the arm, crosses over the head, and it just rotates and fits nicely across the body. So we have that. Oop, that's on wrong. Flip it over. There we go. Crosses over there. Now we can take the sword. The sword magnets itself onto the back. We can take the Oni assassin head, plug it in on top, and then um, we can put hands on him. I'm just going to put his grasping sugar hand on, and we'll just put an open hand on the other. Um, a cool little thing about this figure, um, besides that the hands are their own color, actually are, are different colors and different designs, but I also replaced the ball pegs in there because this is off the blade figure, so the ball pegs were originally brown. They're now black. I got some new ones. So there we go. We have our assassin figure looking very, very killer. I think this is really, really fun. Talking about the magnetics now, because we mentioned the energy and stuff before, you can see the red highlights in the arm that run all the way around and are very, very cool. I'm very, very proud of them. As you can see them in there in all the little cracks. Um, but this panel right here is magnetic. So I can, I'm trying to get this on camera. I just dig my nail underneath. You can see it just pops out. There's the magnet there. There's another magnet embedded in the arm. And so this little piece um, is just the covering. We're going to put the covering down. And now this is his uh, magnetic energy blade that I made. This is Some of this is sculpted. It's some parts bashing too. But we have the magnet there. And so now you just take it and it just clicks in nicely into the arm. So you can see now he has his energy blade that comes out of the arm. So I thought that was really cool. We really don't see 1 12th scale figures with interchangeable parts or magnetics for that matter. So I thought it was really cool that he has this magnetic blade that he can put on his arm. So that's a cool little feature he has. Magnetic interchangeables with a magnetic covering. I have a feeling I'm going to do this and now someone, someone, some big toy line might show up with it. So magnetic faceplate, so magnetic arm. Hey guys, sorry, my camera cut out so there might be a cut there, but don't worry. Um, anyways, yeah, so have him scarfed up like that. So now I'm going to show you his final conversion. So we're going to pull everything off. We're also going to pull the hands off because his last conversion is sort of the kingpin design. Oh, actually, before I show you your kingpin mobster, he has a magnet right in that strap there, and that's for the magnetic pistol. So he has a magnetic pistol holster, and it just holds to his leg, which is really cool. It doesn't come off or anything. You can also take the sword and magnet it on there too. So he can also have his sword sheath on his side. So once again, just doing everything to give him options. So those are some cool things you have too, some extra weapon storage on him. Anyways, so for the final kingpin design, I'm gonna put on his coat. So I'm gonna pull the arms back like so, take the coat, and then just run the hands through the coat. This was based off the um, blade coat with some semi-heavy, I don't know, semi modifications to it to really um, personalize it. So you just bring, bring the arms around and then just straighten out the coat. And thankfully there's a wire inside the lapel um, that allows to keep everything together and pose a little bit better. So we have that. I like using this head sculpt with it because I feel like the gold 
the gold lip ring and the gold cuff on the arm um, fit together well. Then I'll put some hands on him also again. We're going to put the put the fire hand on it because the fire hand is the fire hand's cool. I like the fire hand, so he gets the fire hand. Um, so I got the fire hand on, and I'll put a I'll put the fist on the left hand. Sorry, give me a sec. Just want you guys to be able to see it and see the changes and appreciate it. So there we go. This is his sort of kingpin-esque look, gangster-esque look. Um, I wanted him to feel very powerful and also feel like a really cool individual. So he's got his hair. Um, I took the blade coat. I put fur on it. So now he's got this big fur coat on the back. He also has these nice shoulder pads done in a gunmetal, a gloss black, and also has red lining on it. He's got some red lining on his shoulder pads too. And the shoulder pads are on, sorry, I realized I was out of the frame there. The shoulder pads are on elastic, so they follow with the arm. And obviously I cut the sleeve short and made a gold cuff for it too. And so he stands out and I'm really, really happy uh, with this um, with this jacket and how this trench coat came out. It has a very commanding and powerful appearance, which is cool. You know, he's deadly. He's got his fire hand. He's got all his guns, and he's got his arm and stuff. And so he's a, you know, he, he runs things around town. I think that's cool. And that gold cuff just, you know, it's all about the swagger for him. So he's got the fur. He's got the gold. He's got his, he's got his gold-plated revolver, all that kind of stuff, just to bring out the ego of this design. So obviously I can still switch out the heads if I don't want that one. I can put on the Oni masked head again too, which also looks awesome. I can keep him unmasked, which I haven't been doing a lot, but you know, he's got this whole other head under it. So he can be like this too, be very tough. I guess if you want to, you could also put the soldier head on, see how that looks, a little bit strange, but still still works everything still fits on him and i think that's the really great part is that you know this character really just embodies this guy can be anyone anyone he wants to he sort of runs through the different ranks of the criminal world he's a soldier he's an assassin he's a crime boss so just super fun a lot of a lot of little details went into this guy a lot of thought i think that was the big thing for this character is that there's so much thought that goes into designing a character from scratch you know, there's no references. I'm not making a Marvel character. I have no art. I have no stories. This guy, you know, had to come from nothing and build into this fully fleshed out character with a lot of individual components and, you know, obviously a lot of features too and a lot of detail. So all that was really fun to make and design. So I hope you guys enjoyed this review. I hope you've found some inspiration maybe um, if you don't know me <clears throat> or if you don't follow me, um, I take a better care of my Instagram channel than I do this YouTube page. So find me on Instagram at Tosh underscore customs. That's my handle. I definitely have a link in the about section on this, um, on my channel page. I don't know if I'll have one in the description. I'm a little bit wishy-washy on that and I sometimes forget. So I apologize ahead of time. Um, but yeah. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I know you hear that on every video. I don't make any money off of this, so it doesn't matter. You'll notice this has no ads, but I just appreciate the support. And um, it also lets you know when I post up more videos. Um, so with all that sort of PR, check me out type stuff, um, thank you for watching this review. Once again, this was such a fun character to make and design. And I hope you guys found some joy in watching this review too. And without further ado, I hope you all have a wonderful day. Take care.